So, Father God, that they are certain. Father God, let there be no complication. Father God, we ask that Sister Shannon that we ask to continue to bless her and her meeting. Father Thank you, God. Lord. Remember her yes. mother, Father God. And Father Thank God, you. whatever the ailment may be, let it become the same Hallelujah. Path. Remember to continue to watch over Evangelist Lane and Brother Jacob Lane, Brother. But whatever the health problem, or whatever the therapy is, Father God, we know that, Father God, you have all power on heaven and earth. Nothing is too hard for you. Father God, we have not because we ask not. You said, ask that we shall receive. We're going to continue to remember the ones that have been born in Israel, Father God. Father God, we know that you are in complete control, Father God. Father God, we want to remember the ones that are on their way, have your angel protecting them to and from. Father God, we want to remember the ones that are incarcerated. That they'll say one day, one month I do be saved. Because we know that you're a way maker, you're a promise keeper, you're a provider, yes, you're Lord. a keeper. Father God, we know that nothing is too hard for you. And forever we want to give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. 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 Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. We thank God for his grace. You have a seat. Thank God for his grace and his mercy on tonight. We say, Praise the Lord, everybody with us, with us, amen, in the house and online. Praise God. Amen. And we're going to look into the word of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says man shall not live by, cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. On tonight, we're going to continue our study. We've been talking about stewardship. Amen. We've been talking about stewardship tonight. Praise God. And we have our key scripture here found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. Moreover, uh, let let a man so count of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Can we say amen? Amen. So the Lord has to find us faithful. Praise God. Amen. And we're going to ask you, if you can, just share us. Praise God. Like us. Amen. Encourage those around us to be able to be engaged on tonight. So tonight, praise the Lord. We're going to review quickly, and then we're going to a new topic tonight. Remember, stewardship has been dealing with us as kingdom stewards, dealing with the protection and expansion of what God has entrusted to us. Amen? Amen. Remember, everything belongs to the Lord. The only thing God has done, he's entrusted us with it for it to be grown and to expand. We have to protect it, but then he wants it to grow, and he wants it to expand. Amen. Remember, we have to follow safe and proper procedures, otherwise known as following the word of God. Amen. We need to do as we are instructed to do. This, this is what stewards do. Amen. We need to be timely, not only be in place on time, but make sure that we are, are managing our time appropriately. Amen. Amen. Then also improve our abilities. Amen. Through continued education and work well with others. This is our description and our attitude should be one that's grateful. Be grateful for what the Lord has already gave us, what he's committed into our hands. Amen? Be content and loyal to God. Content what we have and loyal to God. Generous in our giving. Amen? Generous in our gift sharing. Be charitable. Have compassion. And, of course, follow and listen to what the Lord is saying, either through the Spirit of God, amen, or through the Word of God. Amen? So that's what Stewart's attitude is. So, so we, I'm just going to quickly review over the ones we've already been over. We've been over, remember, about managing our thoughts. Amen? Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, or things are honest, or things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are, good, are of good report, to be any virtue, to be any praise, think on these things. Amen? We have to manage our thoughts and be good stewards of our thoughts. Then we talked about our time. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible tells us, amen, that our days are as three score and 10. And by strength, we'll get four score. That is 70 years, three score and 10 by four score. That's 80 years old. Praise the Lord. And then in verse 12, he says, Lord, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So we need to know that the Lord has given us the ability to look at how much time we have to manage it appropriately. Amen? And and remember, uh, church, there are questions that go with each one of these um, different topics. If you don't have those questions, all you got to do is 
drop it in the chat. You can email. We got Deacon Murray here, or you can drop it in the chat. You need the questions. Uh, if you don't have those, I have the ones that have been turned in. I've checked those off in my grade book or in my, I'm just, the grade book is not a grade, but the grade book is for, to see if you completed your work or not. Okay. So everybody's going to have an A. Amen. <laughs> if you've done your work. <laughs> Amen. So uh, I want to make sure you understand that. So I am keeping a record who is and who is not turning their work in. And if you have not turned your work in, I'm going to come and encourage you to do so. Amen. All right. Simple questions about stewardship, because stewardship is something that will change the fundamental aspect of your life. Amen. So I want to make sure everybody gets what God has for us in this teaching. All right. Next one we talked about was a stewardship of our talents. Every good, James 1 and 17, every good and perfect gift, uh, every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither is a shadow of turning. And of his own will, will he beget us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So the Lord has every gift we have and, and gifts and talents is what the Lord has given us. Amen? Amen. Rather, we have inherited them by the Spirit of God or inherited them through education or inherited them through experience. Every talent, every gift still comes from God. Amen? So, and our job is, again, to keep those and to expand those, amen, into lives of other people and other situations. Amen? So, on tonight, uh, oh, yeah, also here, I'll put it up here, that if you are interested in talents and you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, uh, there's a little book that I encourage you to purchase called Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts. It's two dollars on on Kindle, Amazon, or five dollars soft copy, but it's discovering your spiritual gifts. I can't see it up there exactly who the author is, but if you type in discovering your spiritual gift, this is the cover of it, and they have it, and, and you can get it. And there's a little um, survey in the back of the book after you read the book the questionnaire. You can go through the questionnaire, and it will pretty much tell you where are your spiritual gifts. Amen. Amen. And we talked about it last week about how it's important for us to understand our spiritual giftings. Amen. In order to help us to be know who we are and also help us to be able to work well with others. Amen. For we all come into that complete man that God has called us to be. Amen. In the body of Christ. All right. Now, tonight, praise God, I believe the next slide is tonight. Tonight is stewardship of your testimony. Amen. And I have very familiar passage scriptures up here. Uh, and we're going to read those and then we're going to talk about them. Amen. We know Matthew 28, 19 says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So here in this passage of scripture, Jesus tells what to go there, go there for, right? Yeah. Tells who's he talking to? He's talking to his followers. He's talking to you and me. <laughs> Amen. That's question number one on your assignment. He's talking to followers and he's talking also talking to you and me. Amen. The disciples were there. Followers are there. But who is he talking to today? He's talking to us. Amen. So any one of those answers will be appropriate for that question. So he says, go, 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 therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have what commanded you. Amen? Amen. So the Lord wants us to go and talk about and share the same things he shared. Amen? Same things he talked about. Same thing. He says, look, he says, look, you're not going to be by yourself. So one of the things that we have to understand with our testimony is that we are commanded to go and share with others. Amen? That's a command. All right? Uh, however you put onus on that command, just remember that uh, it is a command. Matthew says it's a command. It's not a request. And I think sometimes we, we kind of, um, because of our personality or because of whatever else going on in our life, we think this is a request or a suggestion. Amen. But when we look at what Matthew's saying, Jesus says, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So he's telling us go and he's commanded them and to share these, praise God, with somebody else. And he says, I will never, and I'm not going to leave you by yourself when you are sharing what you have to share. Amen. So, so we have to see this as uh, we got to share our testimony, church. Amen. Share what God's done for us. All right. Jesus instructed his disciples, that's you and us, all right, and of all ages to make disciples and teaching them and baptizing them, encouraging people to follow his teaching. So um, that's what we want. And that's how we make disciples. We make disciples by encouraging people that we come in contact with uh, to do the same thing or to, to, to be influenced by what Christ influenced us by. And I put the words keep and expand up there because we are keepers of this. Amen. We're keepers of this, of this name. We're keepers of the word. We're keepers of Christ's promises. And we, well, our job is to share and expand those with other one, other people. All right. So remember the two primary definitions of stewardship is to keep what God's given us and to expand it. Right. Amen. So our, so, so our testimony and we'll talk about testimony here in a minute, what that actually means um, about how we share that with somebody. And probably some of you are already doing it. Amen. Hopefully you're doing it. But tonight we want to pinpoint exactly what it looks like. All right. So that's what he tells us. So let's look at another past scripture. All right. Very familiar past scripture, right, class? Amen. Acts 1 and 8, right? But he says, let's read, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All right. So he says, Jesus told his first disciples that they were to be his witnesses in Jerusalem. All right. And the witness is supposed to testify about what they've seen and what they experienced. So the first thing we need to do is, is that when after we receive the power of God in our lives through the Holy Ghost dwelling down on the inside, the Lord, uh, again, we're keepers of this. We want to expand this. We, we just need to share with somebody what the Lord has done for us. Amen. We doesn't mean you have to take a text. Doesn't mean praise God, but we still want to be biblically sound in what we talk about. All right. All right. Doesn't mean you have to quote scripture. What people are looking for is a firsthand experience of what God has done for you. Amen. And being they so uh, when they begin to see that the Lord has impacted your life, then we know that the Lord is no respecter of persons. Then they can have the same type of impact on their life. Amen. So our job is to share our experiences with somebody else amen so that's what he says he said be my witnesses witnesses and every witness as they do you know if you watch a court case though um witnesses some tell if they're eyewitness they all tell the same story but a lot of times there's a little variation in the story because it's different experience so you know, when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are the synoptic gospels, but they're all just a little different, all right? But the thrust of the message is the same. So we have to understand is that you're, you're not trying to be somebody else. You just have to be yourself, amen? And, and, and just share what the Lord has placed in your heart to share. And hopefully after tonight, we will help you know how to do that. Amen. So question number two, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my what class? Church Witness. shall be my Amen. witnesses. Amen. And he's talking to us about that. Be our, be his witnesses, according to Acts chapter one and verse number eight. Testimony. Somebody say amen. To keep amen. and to expand. All right. Now, let's go. To, let's go to first Timothy chapter uh, two. And we're going to read down through verses one through uh, I believe six, and when we get to verse six is what I want to talk about testimony. So I just put this in here so we have some little context of the scripture. Timothy here is saying, I exhort you therefore that first of all in supplications and prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks 
be made be made for all men. So here Timothy's letting us know that we need to pray for people. Amen. We need to be prayerful. We need to have a mind of prayer. We have a spirit of prayer. We need to praise God and know that prayer is what, amen, builds the church, strengthens the church, delivers the church, empowers the church. Amen. Remember, Jesus went in there and he chased all those men out of the temple. And he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it to a den of thieves. So prayer needs to be going on in the house of God. Amen. Prayer needs to be going on on a regular basis in the house of God. And he tells us who to pray for. Supplications prayer for all men. We need to pray for everybody. Amen. And look, he says for kings and for all those that are in authority. So here in 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, this is why we pray, amen, for leadership, not only just not, not just spiritual leadership, but natural leadership. Pray for the president. Pray for the Senate. Pray for the judiciary. Pray for the state representatives. Pray for the governor. Pray for the mayor. Amen. Pray for the congressman. Pray for the councilman. Pray for the alderman. Pray for the county supervisor. We need to pray, praise God, and for all of them that are in what? Authority. Amen? Because each one of those has what? A different type of what? Authority. So we need to pray that God's hand be on them. That they, that we, that we, we pray for them, that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness and honesty. Amen? Saints, saints, saints' lives, praise God, should not be full of a whole lot of turmoil. Amen? Amen. Saints' lives should not be full of a whole lot of, 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 of excess, of, 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 of turbulence, because uh, maybe the turbulence is in your life based on what, Je what Timothy's saying here is that you're not praying for other people. Turbulence might be coming into your household because we're not doing according as the scriptures have instructed us to pray for those around us. Praise God. We want to pray. We want to pray for the president and Congress and the judiciary and the and the generals and, and all those that, that run our country so that we can live our lives quiet and peaceable inside of the country we live in. Okay. Amen? So many external factors are influencing our country outside of our country, but we live in the country. Okay. And there's people who protect us at our borders. Mm -hmm. Amen? Are, are outside. And, you know, some things that are going on in the other parts of the world do not affect us, per se, because we are, we have those first lines of defenses around us that we live inside. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what we need to do is continue to pray for those young men on those ships. Mm -hmm. Pray for those young men flying those planes that, that represent our military. Pray for them. Amen. Pray for them that they will be able to do their job. Amen. And be able to keep, amen, freedom alive in the United States that we enjoy. Amen. amen. Praise God. So we can lead quiet and peaceful life, honestly, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Amen. Somebody say amen. God is pleased. Amen. When we are leading quiet and peaceful lives, because when we live in quiet and peaceful lives, guess what? Someone who is who has life with turbulence can come and find us. Praise the Lord that we can speak a word of peace and comfort into their hearts. Amen. And that's where we get a chance to share our, um, steward our testimony. Verse four, he says, who will have all men to be saved? So I'm getting to the just. So here, God wants who saved? Who does God want to be saved? Everyone. Amen. Everyone. Yellow, black, white, straight, gay, whatever you want, whatever, whatever your flavor is, whatever your world flavor is. Amen. Whatever your world flavor is, whatever the world got you tied up in. Amen. Amen. God wants you to say, wants to be saved, wants you to be saved out of that. Amen. Praise God. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, watch this. How are they going to come into the knowledge of the truth if they never hear the truth? Amen. Amen. And sometimes some people will never make it to the house of God. Some people will never make it to a Sunday morning service. The first truth they're going to hear is your testimony. Amen. amen. And amen. And the testimony that we need to let them know, but there's only one God. Amen. And he is the mediator, amen, between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. 
So we have to let them know, praise God, that there's one and there is one who can help. And there's one mediator between the one that can help us. His name is Jesus. All right. And he says, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Yeah. So here, this is what we, this is one thing that we can share. We have to know that we, God wants all men to be saved. We have to share, praise God, the goodness of Jesus Christ, that he's the one that allows us to get to God. And if we get to God, God's the one that can do something about my situation. Amen. And then let them know that Jesus did what? Gave his life. He gave, a, he gave himself a ransom for who? For all. He gave his life. Praise the Lord. And we need to what? Testify of that to someone else. Amen? Amen. So here, Timothy is really showing us here in these first six chapters, this first six verses of chapter two of first Timothy, what, how God views us in our stewardship of sharing the gospel. Amen. So we have to testify what God has for us. Any questions from anyone? Amen. All right. Uh, no questions, no one. Praise the Lord. So your next answer is, is that you need to write, praise God, 1 Timothy 2 and 4. And the reason why I want you to write that is because I want you to know that God wants who to be saved? Everybody. He wants everybody to be saved. It is not God's desire that no man perish, but that everyone come to repentance. And when we understand that every person I see, every person I come in contact with, you know, I often think about uh, when I watch, uh, you know, I like watching uh, games on TV and some every so often they show pictures of those stadiums, don't they? And there'd be 50,000, 100,000 people. And you look up there and you say, that's a whole lot of people, right? Amen. But God wants all those people saved. Amen. That's amazing, isn't it? It seems like it's an overwhelming number, but God can save all of them. But all they need is somebody to do what? Share the gospel with them. Amen. And it bring them through the process Amen. Of their transformation. Hallelujah. All right. And I look, I said, man, there's a lot of people here, but you know, it's amazing. God wants all those to be saved. We don't have to, we don't have to witness to all of them. We, the Bible says that we need to pray that the Lord of the harvest send what church laborers into the harvest. Amen. You know, we, we have to testify, but then we also can pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the harvest because Jesus says the fields are white. And ready for harvest. So we have to be in prayer. So that's why I'm so glad that prayer is going on in the house of God every morning. Amen. Amen. It may not be in the house of God, but it's, among, it's, in, it's in the household of faith Amen. in our presence. And guess what? You, some people may think it's not making an impact. It's making a huge impact. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not only in your life, but in the life of the church that is thriving off of the seeds that are sown and sacrificed to God. Amen. So, 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 so know that the Lord understands your labor of love. Amen. All right. Let's keep on going here. All right. So as modern day disciples, the Lord also, we have a desire to be faithful witnesses saying and doing all that we can to give witness of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires that all people be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Amen. We must testify of Jesus, his work, his effect on our lives and how how uh, and how it can bless and better other lives. Amen. So our job is just to help people have better lives. Coming to the house of God, coming to church, being part of a local body of Christ, Christ is about making your life better. Amen. Amen. It's not about a whole bunch of laws and legalism and these and those and doubts and those. All that will come in time. But know that the love of God is the is the motivator. Understand it. That that having God is better than not having him. <laughs> Amen. Having the Lord is better than not having him in this life we live. Because remember, we found out a couple of classes ago that we only have a certain amount of time on this earth. And guess what? We need to live those certain amount of days on our earth with being in the hands and in the arms of the God that we serve. Yeah. Amen. And we'll and we will live better, better lives. And then guess what? If we do it right and God helps us through us being empowered by the spirit of God on the inside, 
not only will this life be better, but the next life of eternity will be better. Yeah. Amen? And that's what we want to do. We don't want no one to lose out on their reward that God has made, praise the Lord, by creating, amen, a father's house where there's many mansions. Praise the Lord. So we want to encourage as many people, our family, amen, our friends, people we come in contact with on a regular basis. You know, Jesus is really talking about not people that we meet random. He's really talking about us focusing on those that we that we deal with on a regular basis. Amen. Family, uh, acquaintances I may see wherever I may go, you know, on a regular basis because because because. Um, uh, salvation is about relationship. Salvation is about relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But guess what? In order for other people to be saved or come into that relationship, we have to build a relationship with them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So once we build, so we have, we're in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to get to God, and then people connect to us. And we have a relationship with them, and then we can help them learn and meet the God that we serve. So it's about relationship. It's about having a, a, a regular uh, attendance, having a regular experience with someone, amen, and sharing the good news of what the Lord has done. Not taking nothing away from knocking on doors or having one-time experiences, because the Lord tells us to do that, to go out and share but, all, but I want to make sure we understand is that uh, the Lord, first of all, says we shall be witnesses unto what? Judea. That means we, we got to be witnesses at home. Amen. We have to encourage those that we're around on a regular basis. Have you considered giving your life to Christ? Amen. And, 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 and knowing that the wrath that is to come, praise the Lord, pulling men out of the fire, praise the Lord, we have to encourage them to come on in. Now, everybody ain't going to come. And I think sometimes in the share of our testimony, I think the rejection of a few makes us not share with any. That's, that's, our, that's nature because, you know, sometimes our feelings get hurt. Sometimes our feelings get hurt. But don't let the rejection of a few keep you from sharing with any. And that's what a lot of times that's what happens. So, you know, they don't want to hear me, so I ain't going to share with nobody. That's that's the nature. That's our, that's that sin nature in us, is that when we don't see success, we're ready to quit. Amen? But how many know the Bible says that all heaven rejoices when one, when one soul repents before God? Amen? Amen? And how much more will it be if you are the facilitator of that soul repentance, amen, you, you, you might get a star in your crown. And I want you to have as many stars in your crown that you, that, that'll fit in your crown. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yes, person. I also feel like part of that, that, that rejection, how we can help mitigate that is just Exactly the words you have up on the screen. Just share your story, share your testimony. Right. People know when you're being genuine, but when you're trying to 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 come up with the perfect word or the perfect uh, saying to say to them at that moment, you know, you you'll fumble over your own words trying to find a scripture. Just tell your story, and that's where the people will glean from. It. Amen. And that's and that's and that's all God wants to do. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was talking around. Talking about what he what he what he seen what he witnessed. John the Baptist um, uh, followers were talking about what John did. They're just talking about. It. We 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 canonize it. We canonize it in scripture. But guess what? They were sharing their experiences. Paul shares his experiences as he writes through Corinthians and through Philippians and through Galatians. Those are Paul's experiences. All right. Peter shares his and Peter. John shares his in the books of John. Moses shares his experiences in the first five books of the Bible. So if the writers, as they wrote under the influence of the Holy Ghost, so the Lord wants us under influence of the Holy Ghost, just share our experience. Amen. And I hope that makes it much, I want to say simpler, but maybe you might be more comfortable being able to share what God has given you. Because, because I believe everybody wants to share the good news. 
Amen. But sometimes we may not know how to do that. So tonight, hopefully you'll have another tool in your toolkit through this week, uh, through tonight and through the next week to help us do that. Amen. All right. First Peter chapter three, verse 15. Again, stewardships of our testimony. All right. All right. Yes, I'm filling the blanks for this one. But he said, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Isn't that amazing that Peter says that? Set God apart where? In our what? In our hearts. The word sanctified means what? To set apart. To be, to be used for a particular purpose. And what Peter is telling us is that we as people, we, we know God is holy, but he needs to be holy. We have to have the holy thoughts of God and him being holy in our in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Though just because something is, is real doesn't mean it's real to us. Amen. And, and but 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 sanctification has to become real to us, has to become uh, 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 true to us. Sanctification, the sanctity of God, that God is set apart, hallelujah, from everything else in this world and in, in this world to come. Amen. And he said, Peter says, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen. So Peter is telling us, set God apart in our hearts, but when someone asks us about what we're doing, we, we're supposed to have a ready answer. Amen. That means a prepared answer. That means a practice answer. That means that I've thought about it, about what I'm going to say if someone asks me. Yeah. Have you thought about if someone asks you about your church, if someone asks you about uh, how did you meet God, what was your Damascus Road experience, have you thought about what you're going to say to these people? Or do we just, when we, we, we're so caught off guard when someone asks us, that we just tell them something? The Lord wants us to think about what we're going to share. Amen? The Lord wants us to think about what we're going to share. And um, here, this is a prepared narrative. A prepared narrative. Some of us may even have to do what? Write it down. Amen. Some of us may even have to uh, 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 practice it a couple of times so that when someone asks me of my hope, I got something I can share. I can tell about Christ. I can tell about him dying. I can tell him how he influenced my life. I can tell him how he delivered me. I can tell him how he set me free and how and how did he set me free? I can go through examples, but but we need to have a prepared piece of information that's in our hearts to share with people. Amen. And we do it what? In meekness, in humility, praise God. And in the fear of God. Hallelujah. So, so, so we're going to do that hopefully tonight. We got to prepare, church. And on tonight, we got a little activity we're going to share with you. Amen. We got an example. Uh, but we're going to get to that in a moment. But the thing I want us to understand is that we have to be good stewards of our testimony. We have to be uh, good stewards to keep. We're keepers of the testimony of God. We are we need to expand it out, amen, and watch God do something great in our lives. Amen? So, prepared speech, a prepared piece of information, a prepared something. So, one little activity we're going to do tonight is that this is called, I know it's small, but I'm going to go through it. All right? Anybody ever heard of an elevator speech? You got 30 seconds, 45 seconds to tell. Yeah. You're in the elevator with the CEO. And you in the mail room and you got his attention. You got 35, 40 seconds to tell him of your idea to get you out the mail room. Amen. So tonight we're going to practice on, we're going to show you how to do this or hopefully give you the tools to do this. Because this, in order for you to get the CEO's attention, you got to have something ready. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's go through this real quick. So it says that it is. It is, uh, what it is, is very simply, 
let me get here because those words are a little small for me. So I'm going to read through here. Give me one second. What it is is simply a presentation that you've worked on, planned, thought, thorough, practiced, refined, and worked again that will tell a person the message of Jesus Christ and the amount of time you have with others in elevators. So remember, in an elevator, how much time do you really have in an elevator? One minute, two minutes? What do you say? A few seconds, right? Uh, if you have more time, of course, be blessed to expand on your speech. In short, it's a quick two minutes or less that you have an opportunity to share the gospel that will excite the hearer through the power of, of God, through the Holy Spirit, hoping, hopefully leading them to want to know more than more at a later time. Amen? Amen. It's simple, safe, telling others how God has impacted your life and sharing with them that he would love to do the same for their life. Amen? Amen. So, 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 so it's just a practice prepared piece of information that you're going to share with somebody. Now, I'm going to go over the steps with it for you. So the steps of an elevator speech are this. All right. First thing you do is that you do an introduction. Praise. Hi, how you doing? Everybody know how to introduce. Hopefully we'll see the example because we have an example prepared for you tonight. Then we present a problem. You present a solution. You share your values or proposition. And then there is a call to action. Amen? Call to action. You got to do all this in a minute or less. Praise the Lord. Amen? All right. Um, so these are the steps. These are the steps. These are the steps. All right. Let's keep going here. So here's an example of a written, remember, have a ready answer, right? That's what Peter said, right? Written example. So here's one right here. I believe that we use this template that we can follow. We have an introduction. Hi, my name is. I work for or whatever problem since you this is this is for a corporate piece, but but somebody's gonna come tonight and show us how to use this right in the gospel. Amen. Okay. All right. Problem, problem. A lot of times the problems present themselves. People are sick, people are not feeling well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hi, how you doing? Are you feeling okay today? No, I'm not feeling too good today. Well, you know what? Is it okay if I pray for you? You know what? When the Lord, I was sick one time and somebody prayed for me. Amen. Amen. And 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 now you give a solution. And if I get a chance to so the value proposition from praying for somebody, you know what? They'll feel better. They'll they'll grow some faith. And then from there, hey, would you like to know more about the God that I just called over you, named over you? That's it. That's all it is. Amen. You get a chance just to push it in there, talk about what God's done. I didn't give them no text. I didn't tell them they're going to hell. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. All I did was do what? I shared with them about my experience. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay. Deacon Murray, we ready? Yes, Somewhere right here. So I asked Deacon Murray to come through here tonight and give us an example because I decided to use somebody that likes to talk. <laughs> so I'm going to let him take the podium here, and I'm going to let him have and do our example and uh, as God has given it to him. So let's receive Deacon Murray by saying, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, so my elevator speech is, is, is partial based on trying to do the exercise, but also it's partial real life and, re and real truth. So I'm just going to go through. Click twice, Lady Brown. All right, so here's the elevator speech, and I'm kind of, you're going to care, I'm kind of going to do both parts of the conversation, all right? How you doing? My name is Norman. How's everything? I see you all the time at lunch, don't I? Okay, yeah. I said, but I noticed the last few days, you've been looking kind of down. Is everything okay? Oh, I see. You feel like nobody cares about you? You feel like you got some problems going on, some issues at, at home? Well, if you don't mind me saying, everything is going to be okay. Besides, if nobody cared, I would never spoke to you, right? 
I went through a similar situation when my dad passed and I felt like no one understood what I was going through. And then I remembered the one who would always be there for me. And it was God. I was reminded of the one of the wisest men ever, Solomon. He said there was a time to laugh, a time to cry, a time to mourn, even a time to dance. Once I understood that a little bit better, things started looking up for me. That's it. See, I like that smile. That's all right. And since we have lunch together, I'd love to chat with you with just a little bit more about this. Really? Tomorrow? Okay. I'll see you then. God bless. Now, everything that I said in this conversation, I also want to share, share, share what I did. I did the introduction, right? I said my name. I said the problem. It was some sad, some depression going on. The solution was that I acknowledged the acknowledgement that I cared about them. The value prop was actually sharing my testimony, what I went through. And then there was a call to action and I invited them for a secondary account, a, se a secondary encounter. But notice, like even like Pastor said, now he hasn't seen this, this presentation, but I didn't give them an actual scripture. I did give them a little hint, but when I said Solomon, to maybe that they would go back and look it up or whatever it is, but I didn't give them an actual scripture. And I just gave my testimony and how the Lord blessed me and how I came through. So I tried to leave them with something else to, to go on after that. God bless y'all. Pastor Brown. Amen. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. All right. So what we're going to do is, is, is that, um, Big Murray, we can we can we can send this out to the Saints, can't we? We can. We can send this out. We can copy this down. And what we would like you to do over the next week is write your own elevator speech. Now, Big Murray is going to send you this slide, and he's going to send you this slide. All right. He's going to send both of them out. He can send both of them out. We're going to print it out and send them out to you. Amen. All right? So that you have a template. And what we would like to do is we would like for a few of us to share those out next week. All right? Can we say amen? So we're not asking you to do something that we don't give you an example and we don't give you the structure on how to do it. All right? But remember what Peter said. What did Peter say? Uh, let me go back here. All right. I know a couple clicks here. Peter said what? To have what? A, have, he says what? <laughs> to be ready always to give an answer to every man, right? Right. To be ready. So what we're doing is that we're doing what the Bible tells us to do, is that we need to be have a prepared answer, all right? And we want to practice this with, you want to practice this over the next, you have all week this week to practice. It, all right, all week, and we can write it, write it out, and then maybe so us can tape it and we we'll post it. But the thing is, is that we need to have a prepared answer to be able to be good stewards of our testimonies. Can we say, man, church? Amen. Now, some of y'all may have already got nine percent of this going on in your mind. I like what Deacon Murray said here. Thank you, Deacon Murray. I appreciate you doing this. Um, uh, but I like this. Look what he said. So he followed, He went down all the steps, didn't he? Yes. Introduced himself. The problem is going to present itself. All right? Because a lot of times, how many know that a lot of people in this world are going through a lot of stuff? So we, that's why we need the spirit of God down on the inside to help us be a discerning. All right? Then the solution is whatever... It is to help that person in that situation. You are that solution. You're not per se the solution, but the information you have and the God you serve is the solution. Amen? All right. Then the value portion of it is that you get a chance to share and they feel better. And then there's a call in action. Can we meet later and share some more? Remember what I said earlier? It's about developing what? A relationship, right? And as I develop that relationship, I'm gonna have I'm gonna continue to develop my relationship with God, and then I'm gonna let them develop their own relationship with God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna facilitate that for them to build their relationship with God. All right, all of us have been facilitators of relationship building. 
Amen. Amen. That's what the church, one of the functions of the church is. One of the functions of the church is to help people facilitate better relationships with the God that they serve. Through praise, through worship, through fellowship, through education, teaching. Amen? Through preaching. All these things are, are designed to help a person to build their relationship. Amen? Stewardships of what? Testimonies. Can we say amen? Amen. All right. So. Uh, where do we go from here? I'm gonna, this, this is where we go from here. So we're going to, yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let me get back. up. I'm not ready for that yet. But um, two things that I really want to focus on is uh, we're going to have this out for you. So you have a template, you know, I mean, I don't really want you to go word for word, but you know, use, use what he said. Amen. And then know the different steps here. And then uh, next week, next week, or Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, maybe uh, somebody will have one they can share with the church. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. Anybody think they'll be able to share with us? Amen. Do you, you think you share with us maybe by Sunday a little bit, put something together? You think so? Amen. All right, let's have a couple of those who are in the house. Anybody online? I don't know anybody watching online, but I need some commitments from those online that somebody's going to do this. I want some commitment. I'll give you about 30 seconds to click. I say, I am going to do this. I commit after. Uh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Can we say man? Can we say man? But remember, church, we're about being good stewards of what? Our testimony. We, and we want to give God, give every man a ready answer. We want to promote the kingdom of God. This is expanding the kingdom of God. Can we say amen? amen? All right. So I think he put up another slide here. Praise the Lord. So we can't forget to turn in our work. I can't really see it with my glasses on. <laughs> but but there's, there's five different ones. And if you need a copy, again, you can see Deacon Murray, you can see myself. Praise the Lord. There is stewardship. That's the first one. Then there is the, the stewardship of thoughts. How to, and that's a paper you need to turn in. Then you have the stewardship of time. Amen. Time. Praise the Lord. All right. And then the stewardship of talents. Praise God. And then tonight, the one with testimony. So let's go over our answers one more time. Can we do that real quick on our paper? All right. Number one, top testimony. Does everybody have a handout in the house or at least have it? Remember, if you need a copy of this, do we have that downloadable PDF? Yeah. All right. All you need is a downloadable PDF there. So who was, question one, who was Jesus talking to when he said, go make disciples? Go make disciples in Matthew chapter 28 and 19. Who was he talking to? Follow, what do you say, Dee? Believers. That's right, believers. He was talking to followers, his, his, his apostles, but he's talking also to who? Me. Us. Us, all right? All right. Question number two. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be my blank. Shall be my witnesses. Now, open-ended question. Why is it important to be a witness? Anybody? Why is it important to be a witness? So that all men may be saved. Yes, Sister Queen. Amen. True to what you do, people can see your life. Anybody else? Why is it important to be a witness? Why is it important to be a witness? Yes, sir. Witness and show proof. Show proof. Show proof. Yes, Dee, what'd you say? I'm just going to relate to you, Israel, when they can see that you're probably going through something different or harder than what they did. Amen. All these, all these answers are good. We need to make sure that we have to know at the end of the day that if we're called to testify about Jesus Christ, we got something to say. Amen. And guess what? What does a witness do on the stand again? A witness does what? It testifies about what they've seen. And what they experienced. 
So when we testify about the goodness of the Lord, we're not looking for scriptures per se. We're looking about personal experiences that we've had with God that we can share with somebody else. When, when I was sick, he did what? He healed my body. Amen. Praise God. When I didn't have a job, praise God, I prayed, I put out applications, and somebody called me back. That's what people want to hear initially. People will hear the word, yes, but they want to hear what happened to you. And they want to find, they try to figure out, do they want the same thing that happened to them? <laughs> some, and guess what? Remember, some will say yes, some will say no. But like I said before, don't let a few no's keep you from talking about it at all. And that's what ends up happening. Get a few rejections. I'm not talking about this no more. I'm going to just keep to myself. No, know that. Remember what God said. There's going to be what? There was five wise versions and what? Five what? Foolish versions. Five made it. Five didn't. Right? Amen. There'll be two in the bed, one taken, one left. Amen? Two grinding at the mill, one taken, one left. So for every person, watch this, for every person who receives something of you, expect, everybody say expect. Expect one person not to receive it. We got to change our what? Our expectation. Amen. Though God wants to save everybody, everybody's not going to be saved. Not because God doesn't want it, but because of the personal decisions that people are making. All right. You got a question? Okay. All right. We're supposed to write Matthew uh, 1, uh, first, or excuse me, write 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Um, I need to back up. The, can you get me there faster than I can get there? Yeah. All right. Let's 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 write that on our paper. First Timothy two and four. And, all right. What does it say? Okay. Who yeah. will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth? Now, I need a, I need someone to exegete that to me. What is what is that speaking to you? So if you tell me what's speaking, that means the scripture. What is that saying? What's that scripture saying to somebody? Who is he? Amen. All right. Who does he want to be saved? Everybody. All right. How are they saved? The knowledge. The knowledge of the truth of God. So remember, when people are saved, they're saved because of the truth of the gospel. They're not saved because of 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 some ex, of of experience, men are saved by receiving the word. Remember, we're washed with water by what? The word of God. Faith comes by what? Yeah. Hearing. Hearing by what? The word of God. And the word of God is what? It's the truth of God. Yeah. Amen? So we want people to come into the knowledge of the what? Of the truth of God. Amen? That you can come up out that situation. Amen? Praise God. All right. Question number four. It's First Peter. Let's go back to First Peter chapter three and fifteen. We got to fill in some blanks, and we get ready to go. It says, "But but blank, but what? But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be what? Re ready always to give an answer to every man that asked you of a reason of the hope that is in you with what? With me? I mean, you don't beat them over the head with it." got to be gentle. Be gentle with the gospel. Amen. Have you ever met a person, man, that railroaded you with the gospel? Everybody know railroad, man? You know, they just beat you over the head. You know, you know you ain't living right, but guess what? I don't need you to railroad me. Right. Jesus, a uh, 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 prophet said, with loving kindness and tender mercy have God done what? Wrong. Praise the Lord. So, so, it, so it's with loving kindness and tender mercies that the love of God pulls us to himself. Amen? All right. And that's why we have to do it in meekness. We have to have a reason. And again, tonight, we are talking about having what? Our ready answer, our elevator speech, getting our hearts and minds prepared 
to share the gospel from our experiences. And we got a couple examples we're going to post to show up on Sunday. Deep Blue, I think Deep Blue going to try. Praise the Lord. That's good. Amen. If we get somebody else who can share that on Sunday, we thank God for that. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise right there. Amen. Thank God for class on tonight. Thank God for you, you, and you being here. Praise the Lord. Amen. We get ready to uh, finish up class tonight. But I want to pray before we take our offering and ask God to give us um, the, the, the desire to want to just share our testimony. Amen. So, Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, Father, for helping us know, God, to be good stewards over our testimonies. Help us to share. Help us, oh, God, to be prepared. Help us, oh, Lord, Father, to encourage those around us, Lord, even those who are going to be writing their testimonies out and sharing them with the church. Lord, God, give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding of how to operate through those, Lord, that they can help somebody else. God, our goal and our desire is that all men be saved. Father, help us whatever tool we need to use to make that come to pass. Lord, bring it to pass for that we give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. While you are standing, we just want to look at our offering here. Praise the Lord. Thanks of God. Ask everybody who can on Wednesday night, get $10, amen, to, to offerings on Bible class night. You can use Giveify. You can go to our website, or you can use text to give 804-305-3302. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you can give according as God has blessed you. Amen. All right. Um, so we take that time to give an offering, give you a couple minutes there. And while you're giving, prepare your hearts and minds. If there's a natural offering, you can grab the basket real quick. If anybody have an envelope or anything they want to give right now, feel free to do so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right, we're going to bless the offering. Go ahead. So we're going to bless the offering. Once again, most gracious Father, we come to you, Father God, thanking you for everything you've done. Father God, we want to bless the one thirty six and 100 fold that were able to give. Father God, we also want to bless the ones that wanted to give that could not give so that they may be able to give next time. And may this offering be used for us, let us keep in your word. And Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While you're standing, just very quickly to put the announcements, know that we have time moves up on Sunday. Amen. Okay. So you need to turn your clocks back. Fall back from 7 o'clock to what? 6, six, six o'clock? Fall back. Amen. Otherwise, you're going to show up at church early. And God forbid you show up at church early. Come on. <laughs> Uh, you show up here. Right? Uh, so remember on Sunday we have prayer at 745 also in the house. Amen. Amen. It's first Sunday. Ministers will be in our ministerial attire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank God for you, you and you in the house. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord Father, for your grace and your mercy. I ask the Lord to watch over us and keep us and lead us and guide us. Help us, oh God, to share our testimony. Help us, oh Lord Father, to be able to have a plan to give every man a ready answer when they ask us of this hope that's in us. Lord, we ask God to go with us to our seven destinations. Give us the words to say. Let the hearts be soft to receive the word so that we give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you all. We'll see you all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So we'll get you ready. We'll get you ready. Those two get you ready. I added y'all on Facebook. I'm not on.
You can't do it for me. You need to do it for me because I'm not going to take it. I'm locked down. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I feel a lot on this mic. Oh, shit. You ain't on me.
It's up to where it's supposed to be at. And, and you keep running water and then you're going to overflow and you're going to take a lot, a lot of water before you get it. Well, I'd like to make a comment to Evan about that. Amen. How much away from the home. Feel free to listen in and share with whomever you want. Let me see. 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 Let me